This is the Washington Times front page for Monday, November 22nd, 2021. Thanks for starting your week with us. I'm George Gerbo. The Biden administration's more lenient approach to illegal immigration is now showing up in the nation's courts. Stephen Dynan reports over the final three months of the last fiscal year, judges issued deportation orders in less than a third of cases. That's down significantly compared to 2019 and 2020, when 80 percent of cases resulted in either removal orders or grants of voluntary departure. Department of Homeland Security officials say the numbers are the result of the administration's push to expand the reach of prosecutorial discretion. That's the practice of releasing migrants even though judges didn't rule in their favor. Instead, cooperation between DHS lawyers and migrants has resulted in record rates of cases being dismissed or terminated. The military system of implementing a COVID-19 vaccination order is facing stress as soldiers file for religious waivers. Ben Wolfgang reports the result so far has been a logistical headache for Pentagon leaders and an unenviable task for chaplains. With the Department of Defense mounting an aggressive push to get service members vaccinated and force out those who refuse, sources across the military said the volume of faith-related exemption applications is unlike anything seen before. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and senior Pentagon leaders say the mandate is a readiness issue needed to protect those who serve and prevent COVID-19 outbreaks from cutting short deployments and missions. While Chinese tennis star Peng Shui was shown in brief video clips over the weekend, Bill Gertz reports her lengthy, still unexplained disappearance and the near-total social media blackout imposed on her story show how sensitive her case is for the Chinese Communist Party. Peng was seen in a video at a tennis tournament in China over the weekend and in a video call with International Olympic Committee leaders. Peng claimed she was fine but asked for privacy and didn't offer an explanation for her three-week disappearance. On November 2nd, the two-time Grand Slam doubles champion accused former Chinese Communist Party official Zhang Gaoli of forcing her to have sex with him. Her post on the Chinese social media site Weibo detailing the alleged assault was quickly taken down by censors, and her whereabouts had been unknown since this weekend. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. If you don't have access to the Times yet, you can visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. Protests after the acquittal of Kyle Rittenhouse popped up across the country, including in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where a prayer vigil was held. The 17-year-old was accused of murder for fatally shooting two men and injuring a third in the aftermath of protests last year in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the police shooting of Jacob Blake that left him paralyzed. After the acquittal, Virginia Lieutenant Governor-elect Winsom Sears said it's time to stop picking at America's racial scabs. And finally, House Republicans are seeking a probe into why taxpayer-funded election grants were given to Democratic consulting firm SKDK during the 2020 cycle. Harris Alec reports Republican members of the House Oversight and Reform Committee sent a letter to the Inspector General of the Election Assistance Commission requesting the probe. The EAC is a nonpartisan federal agency that helps states administer elections. Of particular concern to Republicans is a $35 million election grant given in 2020 to SKDK by California Secretary of State Alex Padilla. The potential conflict of interest was significant enough that the EAC agreed to launch an audit earlier this year of how California spent its election grants. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Just search Washington Times in those apps. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerber.